Those of you who watched my favorite free 3D printing files video the other week might have noticed that some of my 3D printed terrain is unpainted. So I thought I'd challenge myself and see if I can paint up all of these and prepare them for the table in less than an hour. So I guess I'm not the only one who buys more plastic or prints more stuff than I can paint. But these uh, from Shadespire I want to play with this week and these scattered terrains I've had for over a year just lying around waiting to be painted. What better way to do this than to make a challenge to record it to just make sure that I actually do this. I'm going to set up the camera, I'm going to start my phone and the timer on the phone so you can see that I actually don't take more than an hour. I hope to be able to finish it within that time frame. I've prepared these uh, by priming them with uh, a graffiti spray and the reason why I use a graffiti spray instead of a, a normal primer is because it's quite thick so if there are any lines in the terrain those are gonna disappear with the graffiti spray. And I'm going to use all of my tools available, which means that I'm going to be using uh, everything from pigments to water effects to airbrush, uh, as long as I finish it within an hour. So let's uh, start doing this and I'll talk to you after. So guys, seven terrain pieces in 60 minutes now. It's a heavy task, but let's try it. So I start off with these 3D printed Shadespire Underworlds terrain pieces. I want them to look like they're underground with like a magic green shimmer coming from above as the light source. So I use a dark sea blue from Aleo and warp stone glow from GW. I start off by painting all the inner corners with the dark sea blue. This will act as the shadow on the train piece. Before all the blue has dried I go in with the warp stone glow and make a wet blend. The green is used from the upper parts and then blended downwards. And on the floor I'm using the green on the outer edges, making the sheen coming from outside of the ruins. There are also some parts on these terrain pieces that look like a muddy ground, and I'm painting that with the brown color Rhinox Hide. And I'm just repeating this process on all of the three terrain pieces that I'm using for Underworlds. Time to move on to my Age of Sigmar scattered terrain pieces. To get some natural variety in these rock parts and stone parts, I'm just slabbing all of the random colors that I have on my wet palette. You don't have to be careful while doing this, this is to give some good variety in the rocks and have a natural feel to it. So I'm adding pink, blues, greens, red, yellows, just go nuts. The paint is thin to about 50% water and 50% acrylic paint. And because of the background being black, you will see later on when the paint has dried that it's going to be a kind of muted color. And then when we add the dry brush in the end, it's going to look fabulous. I'm basing all of the wood parts on this billboard and on the planks and all the other pieces with Mornfang Brown. I'm using a very large brush while doing this and I want it to be a speedy process with something cheap that it doesn't matter if it breaks. So go find some cheap nylon brushes and use those. I'm then adding some of the Rhinox hide to all the rivets and all the dark parts that I need to be in shadow. To give it a bit of a natural texture I'm also adding small green lines. I'm using Elysian green but you can use pretty much any green. This just gives it the natural feel like it has moss on it, like it's been outside for a long while. And when I'm doing this all of the paint is still wet so it blends together very naturally. Moving on to this cellar doors. Same thing here as with the billboard and with the well that I painted earlier. All the wood parts are based with Mornfang Brown. And 
for the rock parts, I'm just slabbing random colors from my wet palette, just going nuts to get a good base that has a natural variety to it. And we're starting with the last piece, the city fountain. This one is sculpted out of rock, so I'm using the same technique as with all the previous rock parts. Slabbing random colors as a base, this will give me a good base to start with and the magic will arrive later on when we add the dry brushing. And I'm now base painting where the water is going to be in the fountain. I want it to look like it hasn't been cleaned for a very long time, like there's algae growing in the bottom. So once again I'm doing a wet blend. I start with Caliban Green on the edges where it's going to be darker and going brighter to the middle with Elysian Green and a final highlight of Flash Kits Yellow. Remember to do this quickly while the paint is still wet and you get a nice blend of this. If it's not perfect don't worry because we're gonna add water effects to this later. So I'm done with the base layers, but I spent a little bit too much time doing this too carefully. We're almost up to 40 minutes already and the paint is still wet. So I'm using a hairdryer to dry all the paint on the minis and yeah, let's start hurrying up a bit. So for dry brushing, I recommend you to use a soft large brush. Unfortunately, all my soft brushes were broken, so I used what I had at home. But if you can use a makeup brush or something, use that instead of this hard brush. And the color I use for dry brushing is Vallejo Game Color Pale Flesh. This will be the dry brush color for all of my rock and stone parts. And for the underworld pieces, I kind of felt like the pale flesh was a bit too bright and a bit too yellow. So I added in a small touch of the warp stone glow just to give it a green tint. And look at the direction of my brush, I'm just doing downward strokes. This way I will create a feeling like the light is hitting from above and all the highlights are just on the upper parts of the rocks. Also make sure to not have too much paint in your brush, make sure to wipe it off properly so the brush is dry. And as you can see just with the base colors and with the dry brushing it's already starting to look really nice. And for the water effects, I'm using Vallejo Still Water. To get a nice tint of this, I'm using a P3 ink, turquoise. Two drops of this seems to be fine for this small amount. It's time to do the shading. For this I'm using the airbrush and I'm using black ink and turquoise ink. If you don't have an airbrush you can just make your own wash using an ink and some medium. But for me, because I have an airbrush, this is the fastest way and I get more control. So I'm spraying this on all the inner parts where I use the dark sea blue and all the shadows under the edges of rocks that's sticking out. So it will be kind of a shadow punch. The inks almost makes the shadows glow. I really love using inks for my shadows. With just a few seconds left, I started adding some pigments to get some natural texture. It's just a dark brown and oxidized green. Okay, so I obviously couldn't finish it in time, but I don't think that was the main focus of this project. I just wanted to get stuff done that I had on my shelf for too long that I didn't want to spend too much time on. The pieces were almost finished, but I just couldn't go that extra mile with them. So I gave myself another 20 minutes to finish all of these 7 pieces. So follow along and see how I did the last steps. The well wasn't sealed enough, so I had to go back and add the water effects the day after. 
I also wanted to sell the effect of the fountain being old, so I added some flock and some birch seeds to it to give it that feel of old leaves and old moss in there. I also had to paint some of the metal details I hadn't had time to finish, and add some green pigments to parts that I had missed. I then had to let the water effects rest for about 20 hours and then I could go back and add some water texture to all of this water. This is the heavy body gel from Vallejo. I then added some PDA glue to some of the parts where I wanted some flock that would resemble moss or vines climbing along the rock parts. The flock I'm using is Gale Force 9 Spring Undergrowth. And as a final step, I just added some random grass tufts. You can use just anything you have at home. And I think I finished it and it looks actually kind of good. Yesterday I played with my friend Victor some Shade Spire and the terrain really added a lot to the game. Like really gave us a sense of feel of the environment in there. Kind of cool how these few small things can add so much to the gaming and, and the atmosphere of the game. And my conclusion here and kind of the reason why I wanted to do this was to prove to myself that I don't have to spend one hour or two hours on every piece. Like these are done in one hour and 20 minutes. It's seven pieces and and they look really good and they will add a lot to the games. Uh, whenever you come to a point where you start racking up stuff that you have, either terrain or maybe models that you haven't finished, just set a time limit and do what you can within that limit. And just having paint on them, having them look good enough is way better than not being painted at all. So instead of having anxiety of the, the terrain pieces just stacking up in your shelves, just just give it a shot, give yourself an hour and see what you can do within that hour. So I hope you like this type of video, I really enjoy doing it. I'll probably have to do it again in half a year or something because I just keep printing too much terrain. That's just the way it is. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. And with that said, have a great day. Bye.